everyone, and welcome to Storm in the Sea. Sharon Reynes Shoval here, live broadcasting from Elat, Israel. Today, we're about to break a new scuba diving Guinness record together. Each and one of you is an inseparable part of this new record, so stick along as the fun begins. While hundreds of divers get organized here around me, let us first introduce you with the concept of this huge dive and your very important role in the Guinness record we're about to break this morning. As part of the 10th anniversary celebrations of Elat Red Sea International Underwater Photo Competition, producer David Pilosov has decided that it's the perfect time to set a new Guinness record for scuba diving. And so, this morning, Friday, September 12th, we're gearing up for one of the most magnificent dives ever carried out. Within a few minutes, and in an operation yet to be seen in the world, hundreds of divers, 26 diving instructors, 32 production members, and 12 professional photographers will all be diving together here at the Satil Missile Boat Wreck in Elat, Israel. Using a sophisticated technological setup, the dive is live broadcasted on YouTube, enabling millions of viewers, online surfers, and smartphone owners from all over the world to take part in this extraordinary event. Together, we'll be breaking a new Guinness record for the largest audience for a live-streamed underwater event. Guinness has set an objective of half a million viewers in order for a record to be registered. Sounds like a fantasy? Not if we all undertake the mission together. Yes, we can. So as you can see, this is not just another new record. It's one that's based on the support and participation of all divers worldwide. It's a collective record achieved by all fans of the Seven Seas wherever they are, and it cannot be done without you. What's your part? Just stick with us during the next 40 minutes and enjoy the view. This brings me to my one and only personal request from you this morning. Now that you realize that our Guinness record depends on the number of viewers on this live broadcast, please send an SMS, send an email, give a call to your family members and your friends, inviting them to join us on this live broadcast and to become part of this new Guinness record we're breaking this morning. Meanwhile, you can see that hundreds of divers have already begun entering the water here behind me. A few minutes ago, they were briefed regarding the guidelines of the dive, and now they're just a few minutes away from entering the water. For safety and logistic considerations, the site has been blocked, both underwater and on land. So everyone you see here is a registered, numbered, and well-briefed participant. As you can imagine, this operation is quite complicated and had to be planned well ahead of time. After all, the plan is for over 200 divers to dive together at the wreck and obviously to return back on land happy and safe. If that isn't enough of a challenge, the depth of the dive is 18 meters, which means that due to health considerations, each diver cannot spend more than 30 minutes underwater. This limitation results with the need for a perfect plan to organize all the divers on the wreck as quickly as possible. In addition, in order for clear and quality images to be taken by the photographers documenting the dive, all divers must be positioned away from the bottom, so they don't stir up sand and other particles with their fins. Add to all these considerations the importance of preserving the underwater environment and, of course, our full intention of having nothing but happy faces down there. In order to cope with this great challenge, a few months ago, we approached Nir Avni, general manager of the Dolphin Reef here in Elat, and one of the leading activists in the Israeli diving industry. Nir was in charge of planning the dive in details, and today, he's supervising the operation. Hi Nir, are you excited? Very exciting. Can you explain us a bit how 200 divers are supposed to find themselves on the wreck this morning? So first, in order to achieve our uh, mission, we describe three main values that we are going to achieve. One is safety, is a personal safety for each diver. Second value is to protect the underwater life. We want to, that everything will remain as it is now at the end of the dive. And the third one, very important, to enjoy the party. In order to achieve it, we uh, actually cut the operation into slices. Instead of managing 200 divers, we have 20 instructors. Each one has 10 divers, and each one of them is actually uh, diving independently. We start together, we end together, we depend on each other, but we still 
20 slices operating separately and each instructor is uh, briefing the divers and leading the divers uh, to the right place on the boat. Actually we have uh, 20 buoys with numbers and each instructor has his own number, his own buoy and he is going to take his group to swim to the buoy, dive down, sit around, smile to the camera, enjoy the party and uh, we cover all this with the umbrella of safety, uh, safety uh, instructors and uh, dive masters and the above water as well if, if necessary and uh, we are ready to go. Sounds like a perfect plan and you got it all under control. Are you joining the dive as well? Very, of course. I'm going to look, you know, from the side, exciting, but uh, I know that it's going to, to, to have fun. We are going to have fun. I'm sure we all will. Thank you very much for this whole operation here. Thank you and enjoy the dive. Good luck. This is exciting. Divers have already begun entering the water. Since we're talking about 200 divers here, it will take a few minutes till everyone's in the water and they start swimming to the buoys on top of the Satyo wreck. Since we're looking at the divers now, I think it's just about time we spend a few minutes to speak about the City Rec, home to our live underwater broadcast this morning. The Satil Hisufa is a 40-meter-long shipwreck which lays at a depth of 24 meters at the bottom of the Red Sea in Elat, Israel. It was one of the five ships that were smuggled by the Israeli Navy on 1969 from Cherbourg, France, after they were confiscated by the French government. The Satil took part in the Six-Day War and 25 years later, it was substituted by a new and more advanced ship. Local diving authorities, as well as Elat Diving Centers, took advantage of the opportunity to establish a new dive site in Elat. And so, on a bright morning in 1994, the Satil ship was sunk in Coral Beach, approximately 70 meters away from the beach. Since then, the wreck has become home to many fish species and one of the most popular dive sites in Elat. In high season, it's visited by hundreds of divers a day. There's no doubt that this wreck is one of the favorite underwater studios for photographers diving in a lot. In fact, during the 10 last years, countless images taken at the Satil wreck were submitted to the Elat Red Sea International Underwater Photo Competition, which takes place here in Elat every year. Thanks to the amazing variety of colorful fish and corals populating the Satil, the nearly undamaged structure of the wreck, its relatively shallow position and comfortable access from shore, it's considered to be one of the best spots for an award-winning image to be captured. Thanks to the fish and fashion category of the Elat Red Sea competition, the wreck slowly became home to many mermaids as well. Underwater fashion photographers, accompanied by beautiful, talented and brave diver models, spent long hours at the wreck taking advantage of its mysterious ambience and stunning colors. Furthermore, on September 2010, the Elat Red Sea team adopted the wreck as an underwater broadcasting base. In an innovative project yet to be seen before in the world, a series of underwater high-definition live broadcasts were captured at the wreck and featured at one of the largest photo shows in the world, the Fotokino Fair in Köln, Germany. Today, the Satil wreck adds an extraordinary line to its already impressive resume as it's just about to serve as home to a new Guinness World Record in the diving industry. Meanwhile, groups of divers have already reached their designated buoy on top of the wreck. However, they'll have to wait there just a little bit longer since some of the divers are still on their way. Remember, each diver has a 30-minute limit underwater and therefore it's important that all divers descend together. When you come to think of it, it's quite good the divers have a few moments to rest once they get to the buoy. A 70-meter swim can be tiring for anyone, but I assure you it's especially difficult when you're equipped with all that scuba gear. If our divers would have begun their dive breathless, they would have consumed all of their air in their tanks pretty quickly. And if there's one thing we would really love to avoid today, it's an out-of-air signal. If you take a good look, not far from this swarm of divers, you'll notice a set of cables stretched out from shore to a raft positioned above the wreck. These cables are live transmitting the visuals captured by HD camcorders underwater. They're just a small part of a sophisticated technologic setup, established in order to provide you with the best live view of this underwater happening. Let's try to figure out how this works.
using the professional services of two major communication companies, Statlink and Valence. This huge underwater happening is live broadcasted on YouTube, enabling millions of viewers from all over the world to take part in this event and to break a new Guinness record of the largest audience for an underwater live broadcast. Around the wreck, at a depth of 20 meters, three professional underwater photographers are documenting the dive. This team of photographers is led by Christian Beton, the well-known French cinematographer who photographed the underwater scenes of Titanic and the Big Blue. Two of the photographers we have down there, Paddy Course director Boaz Samurai and Dima Polichuk, are holding Panasonic high-definition camcorders accommodated inside BS Kinetics housings. The third photographer, Shai Samurai, is making history. She's using a Sony Xperia Z2 cellular phone, which produces 4K resolution videos. Yep, this is the first ever underwater footage that is live broadcasted using a 4K cellular phone. However, in order for this quality footage to reach your screen in real time, an advanced interface is required. This is where Valence comes into the picture with a revolutionary technology called HD Base T. The solution enables transmitting uncompressed HDMI signals to great distances in real time. So, signals produced by all three cameras are transmitted to the surface using high definition cables. On surface, right on top of the satel rack, these signals are received by compressors on an anchored raft. The amplified signals are then transmitted to shore, a distance of approximately 200 meters, using fiber optic cables. The broadcast van, positioned on shore, receives these audio and video signals and transmits them to Satlink satellites. That's where the signals are picked from, enabling to feature this live broadcast on YouTube, online magazines, TV channels and new media fairs around the world. And all of this in real time. It's amazing what a long way these signals go through so quickly. You're now watching our team of photographers in action. Paddy course director Boaz Samurai and dive master Dima Polichuk are holding the large Panasonic camcorders inside BS Kinetics housings. Beautiful Paddy dive master Shai Samurai is holding a very compact ultralight Sony cell phone producing 4K resolution footage. Needless to say, since this footage is delivered to you in real time, there's absolutely no room for errors. Quite stressful when you come to think of it. They're receiving instructions through an audio channel from our live broadcast director, Ram Gil, who's positioned in a satellite van right near me. When it comes to live broadcasting from a depth of 20 meters, dealing with all the electronics featured on the cameras and the housings is a challenge on its own. Photo Shatter Camera, housing engineer and the owner of BS Kinetics, especially arrived here a few days before the broadcast to help us out. BS Kinetics assistance was required for our live broadcast as they manufacture customized underwater photographic and communication solutions. Our innovative project required special solutions to meet our very special needs. Budo. Hi Budo. Can you explain us a bit about the uh, systems that the photographers are using down there? Yes, hello. I can explain a little bit. We're using two different systems. One is a standard video camera from Panasonic with um, high BNC output. And the second one will be a brand new Sony Mobile 4K system. And for that system we built a special housing with converter electronics inside. So I understand this is the first 4K live underwater footage produced and that means that you needed to produce a special housing for this event. Can you explain us a bit about the housing? Yes, I can do. Uh, we have a Valence converter electronic from, from an Israeli company and this uh, converter convert the HDMI signal to a network signal and then we have the possibility to, to transmit the signal 100 meters. That's very important because the HDMI signal is maybe 10 meters, maximum 20 meters. And so we built here a housing that you can fit inside the mobile phone, the converter electronics, and also a battery inside, and then it will work. And we try to have a live broadcast. Well, we're in the live broadcast, so apparently it works. Thank you very much for that. What is, uh, what is it made from? Is it plastic? This is a special kind of plastic. It's carbon fiber. It has the advantage of the steel, so it's as strong as steel, and the advantage of a plastic, so you have no corrosion and it's very light. 
Sounds perfect to me. Thank you very much, Bodo, for all this wonderful equipment, and good luck. Thanks. In addition to photographers holding live cameras, we also have a few photographers documenting the whole event in video and stills. Itamar Greenberg, Arturo Telefeyman, Shadi Samara, Howard Rosenstein, and Alberto Muro Peliconi. As mentioned before, leading our team of photographers is Christian Petron, the famous French cinematographer who shot the underwater scenes for the Big Blue and the Titanic. We had the chance to speak with him a bit prior to the dive. Bonjour, Christian. How are you? Fine, fine. Thank you, Sharon. I always wanted to ask you, what was your role in the Titanic and the Big Blue? Uh, the Titanic is uh, two diving completely different. Titanic is a deep dive with submarine. And uh, my role is uh, working for organization and uh, lighting the uh, wreck is very difficult because a uh, wreck is a long wreck, uh, 200 meters wreck and uh, very high. And the submarine is very small. And we use for this uh, tower light for shooting. And my uh, role is a technical director for the uh, shooting, uh, for Discovery Channel. And the Big Blue? Uh, for the Big Blue is different. I was a cameraman and uh, a director of photography. I organized the lighting and the, the shooting underwater. And he have another director of photography for the surface. What, what are the challenges for the photographers this dive? Uh, of course, it's a big challenge because for me, it's the first time I dive with 200 people in the same time. It's a, it's a big challenge and difficult challenge because uh, he have a lot of technical problem. He have a, a video technical problem like cable, satellite, uh, connection, and uh, uh, communication between the director and surface and the cameraman. It's big technical challenge, but it's not so uh, 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 impossible. But we have two problems, major problem is uh, visibility. We don't know exactly the visibility because uh, if you want 200 divers the same shot, we need uh, maybe uh, 15 meters of distance between the lens and the subject. Well, it sure sounds like a challenge and I think you're the man for it. Um, so finally, what do you think about our Guinness record? Are we going to hit the 500,000 viewers? Incredible. I'm, I'm very fan and uh, I hope uh, we have a big success. Thank you very much, Christian, and good luck in the dive. By now, all divers have reached their destination, and therefore, groups of divers have already begun descending. Sure looks like they're excited. Remember, although only experienced divers were accepted to this dive, none of them has ever dived with hundreds of divers before at the same spot. And you have my word for it. Looking at the big picture, it almost looks like a bee nest, and you think it might get a bit stressful for the divers. However, you should take into consideration that while you see a group of 200 divers, each diver actually sees a group of 10. Since divers were divided to small groups prior to the dive, each of them sticks his position in his own group, rather than in the big crowd. Hopefully. Each group is accompanied by its own private diving instructor. Imagine what a difficult job these instructors have today. As a former scuba diving instructor, I can assure you that looking out for a group of 10 divers, experienced or not, is always a great responsibility. Now, looking out for a group of 10 divers with 200 more divers surrounding you, that's what I call a good challenge. And as they say, better them than me. One of these divers, for the life of me, I can't tell which, is Lark Brinkmann, editorial director of the famous German diving magazine, Unterwasser. We exchanged a few words with Lars prior to the dive. Are you excited? Yes, I'm a little bit excited because I've never dived with so much divers before. What's the largest group of divers you've ever dived with? I guess it's m maximum 12 or so. But in this case, I didn't like it. But I, I hope this time I like it. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Did you arrive here especially for the Guinness record? Uh, the Guinness record is one of the reasons. Um, the other reasons is the Eilat Underwater Photography Festival which we are sponsoring one prize, the World Shootout uh, Amateur category, first prize, and of course we will make coverage also. And are you uh, broadcasting this live broadcast on Unterwasser? 
Exactly, that's the plan. That's all great. So, um, are your family watching? Is your family watching? Your friends? I guess, ho uh, I guess my family, friends, editorial office, everybody. Um, I can't guarantee, but I think so. Okay, thank you very much, Lars. Enjoy the dive. Thank you. Wow, this is happening quickly than I thought. We see that most of the divers have already reached their destination on the wreck. Watching this whole operation from land is Gadi Benzeev, who has been active in the diving industry for, well, much before I was born. Gadi was one of the captains who were in charge of bringing the Satil wreck to Israel in 1969. In 1994, he was part of the team who sunk the wreck for the favor of a new dive site. Gadi? Good morning, Gadi. Good morning. I would say welcome, but considering the fact you were part of the team that it practically created this dive site, I feel more like I'm visiting your home. Well, actually, it was a teamwork of many divers in Elat. And uh, we are talking specifically on one of the missile boats, which has been drowned here by us for, uh, to create a new diving site. And uh, the idea came as the Navy of Israel decided uh, uh, after 20 years of having this boat in uh, operation, they decided to sell it out or whatever. So we managed to get her in here to the water. We paid some money for it and it was a big work, but here we have one of the best diving sites in the lot. That's amazing because I heard that your history with the boat goes way back to 1969. Is that true? Yes, a little before. I was also part of the team uh, where they were built in Cherbourg. And uh, this uh, boat is one of the boats which I was uh, uh, dealing with. But uh, in 69 is the big issue of the five boats which escaped from uh, Cherbourg. And you were part of the team that brought it here? I was captain of one, yes, yes. That's amazing. In the name of thousands of thousands of divers that have been visiting this wreck ever since it was created, I want to thank you for this initiation, you and the team that you've worked with. Okay, it's a long time ago, and uh, it's still very fresh for me every time I come here to the beach or when I'm going diving. And uh, there we are, it's in Elat, what is important. Thank you very much, Gadi. It was great to meet you, great to speak with you, and uh, have a great one. The diver you're now watching, holding a compact camera system, is Howard Rosenstein. Howard is a Red Sea diving pioneer and founder of Fantasy Line, a manufacturer of underwater photo products. He has been involved in the diving and photographic industries for over 40 years. He was inducted into the International Scuba Diving Hall of Fame on 2009, thanks to his outstanding lifelong contributions to the world of diving. We had a small chat with him while getting organized to the dive. Welcome aboard, Howard. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very good, very good. I understand it's not your very first dive at the Satyorek today, is it? Uh, this wreck at the Satyorek, no, it's not my first dive. I've been diving here for many, many years. How many years? Uh, ever since it went in the water here, about uh, what, 15, 20 years ago, whenever it was. Yeah, exactly, 20 years ago, that's yeah. true, that's true. And I see you're holding a camera system. What's your role in the dive today? Uh, I'm going to be, uh, uh, I, I'm diving today on the wreck, uh, taking pictures using this uh, compact system, not one a really big one, just a simple, easy, compact system from Fantasy Line, yeah. Are you going to do video or stills? I actually, I'm doing both. It's quite easy to go from one to the other, so I do a little video, a little still, and, you know, whatever the situation is. What are your challenges in such a dive with 200 divers? Uh, uh, too many bubbles in the water, maybe, and uh, and maybe some of the visibility be, will, will be affected by all the divers in the water. But it's it's a unique situation. It's very special. So we have to give up on some of the water conditions to have such a, a, a special event happening on the on the wreck today. Howard, you have quite a, an impressive experience in the photographic and the diving industries. What do you think about the setup today of this dive? You know, I think it's really impressive to have uh, so many people have uh, streaming, online, uh, broadcast, uh, going all over the world. It's, a, it's quite a, an achievement to be able to do something like that and, and, um, and, and be able to share it with the rest of the world simultaneously. I think it's, I think it's very special. Are we going to break a Guinness record today? I don't know, but if we have Guinness beer tonight, then we'll, we'll break some kind of record. 
<laughs> thank you very much, Howard, and enjoy your dive. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cheryl. It seems like most of the divers have reached their destination and the wreck is starting to look like a lady well-dressed. I wish the team who initially built the Satil could see the scene right now. I bet they never dared to imagine such a large number of people boarding the ship. While some divers had problems to descend as their ears felt some kind of discomfort because you know when diving you need to equalize your ears in order to avoid injuries due to the water pressure exerted on your ears. Most of the divers have safely made it to the wreck and it seems like the whole first part of the dive has been very, very successful. I'm looking though for one special diver that I had a chance to exchange a few words prior to the dive. Her name is Ellie Biel and she seemed like anything but a diver when she entered the water. However, she disappeared and I cannot see her, I guess. I guess we'll have to just wait and see what she's planning for us. Meanwhile, our, our photographers are working hard in order to capture each and one of these divers on the wreck. Sure, like it's, impos like it's possible. You're now watching some of the divers saying hi, signaling that everything's okay in scuba diving language. They're all very, very ready for the first, second part of the dive to begin, the part in which our panoramic photographer begins shooting a panorama of this wreck and the 200 divers sitting upon it. Some of the divers are playing around and spending their time excited underwater, making bubbles. Wow, so many bubbles I see here. You see the photographers wearing a, um, a yellow t-shirt. These are our photographers. Divers wearing a t-shirt, photographers that we know are in action right now. Others are, wa are wearing a white shirt, and these are our safety divers. We have quite a few safety divers down there just swimming around the wreck and making sure that everything is okay. By the way, important to note that on surface, right on top of the wreck, there are emergency boats and emergency members, staff members, waiting not to be called. A beautiful scuba diver is now showing up, holding the Israeli flag. She'll be swimming around the wreck, waving the flag, thereby signaling to all the divers and the photographers that the photo shoot part of the dive has begun. This is the cue we have been waiting for, the cue that signals that everyone made it safely to the wreck, and now we're starting to make the panoramic shot of the wreck. Prior to the dive, I had a chat with Ellie, and though I'm not finding her, though I'm not finding her, I would like to search again. Um, we're trying to search her on the wreck, and it's quite a, myster a mystery. I don't see Ellie on the wreck. I wonder where she disappeared. Well, we'll have to wait a little bit longer. The Israeli flag continues to swim around the wreck. Divers are all excited because they know that now the photo should begin, now they have to start smiling and look photogenic more than ever. After all, not every day you take part in a live broadcast, broadcast underwater with 200 other dive buddies. The photographer you're watching now in action is called Nicola Barake, and he's the one who innocently came up with the idea of this dive. A few months ago, Nicola contacted producer David Pilosov with a request to arrange 200 divers on the Satil wreck in order for him to capture a panoramic shot of this crowd of divers. Apparently, Nicola's specialty is underwater panoramas, and he had dreamt of such a dive for a long while. Pilo, who never turns down a good challenge, immediately began to execute the plan. And here we are today, not only modeling for a panoramic image, but also breaking a scuba diving Guinness record while we're at it. Anyhow, now that Nicola's vision came true, and 200 divers are sitting on the Satilarek here in Alat, Nicola has begun working on his long-awaited panoramic shot. Let's see what he had to say before the dive. Hey, Nicola. First, I would like to thank you for uh, innocently initiating this event, which might just end up as a new scuba diving Guinness record. So I heard that yeah, you're expertizing in underwater panoramic images. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yes, uh, in 2006, I imagined a new view of picture, underwater picture, because a lot of photographer, underwater photographers are good. But a new picture, it's uh, like a target. And imagine this picture, and I made in France with a submarine, the Ruby. And each year I make one or two panoramic. 
And two years ago, I was here and I make the panoramic of the statil. I show to Pilo and uh, the mine follow the, the same picture, but with 200 di divers on them. It's like this. Thank you for bringing up this great idea. And it's happening today. So what's your plan for today's dive? Today, it's, uh, my plan is uh, I hope God with us and uh, I, I will die with uh, all, all the divers. When they start to go down, I will go down again. I wait 10 minutes they are in place. We have the signal and after I start to make my picture. And I have 10 minutes to make my picture. A lot of pictures to finish by one. That's quite stressful, isn't it? Sorry. It's quite uh, stressful making all these uh, images in 10 minutes. It's, uh, it's a very big challenge. I think Pilo have a stress too, but he's, he's trying to, to make me in stress. So, so no, it's okay. Your, your attitude is of a, of a winner's. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I, told, I told to Pilo I, I have 50% chance to make it. So I keep a <laughs> chance. <laughs> I bet on the other 50, the good 50. Yeah, good. <laughs> so how many shots will you have to do in order to compose the final image? I hope it's uh, not a big wreck, but I between 60 to 80 pictures. Thank you very much, Nicola, and good luck. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. While Nicola is working hard to produce this once-in-a-lifetime shot, it seems like our divers are enjoying themselves and having a blast. There goes our briefing regarding looking representative on a live broadcast. Our behind-the-scenes photographers are working hard as well. They're trying to capture all the actions, so once this live broadcast ends, we can show the process of this very, very huge, complicated and sophisticated project. Probably one of the most sophisticated projects this Elat City has ever hosted underwater. And maybe in the past, in the next years as well. Above water, I'm looking at the surface, it seems very calm. You cannot imagine the 200 divers are now sitting on the wreck. Everything seems so very calm and nice, the sun is shining. What you can see is you can see a lot of bubbles coming down there. You can see the raft is moving all the time because of the swarm of bubbles that surrounds us all the time. We had a chat with producer David Pilosov prior to, uh, prior to the live broadcast and he was very excited. In 2010, we, made, um, we also produced a live broadcast for the Fotokina Fair in Germany. The live broadcast was different because everything was very, very well planned ahead and we had control of everything that happened. You can imagine that as in this live broadcast, things have life of their own. Every diver has its own rhythm and sometimes the communications with the underwater team is lost and then we have to come up and improvise stuff that everybody knows how to do. The nice thing is that everybody has times underwater. Our photographers know that if they don't receive a cue by a certain time, then they should execute a plan as planned. Producer David Pilosov is also underwater, looking at this live broadcast from very close. This is a dream come true by all means. All the diving centers in Elat have all joined together in a cooperation that has yet seen before in the city. After years of working independently, dive centers have integrated their sources and their resources and set up together one of the most magnificent projects ever. You can see that the divers continue to make nice smiles to the camera as Nicola continues to shoot around. So many divers, we have 10 underwater photographers down there shooting the whole scene. Three of them are live and the rest are uh, behind the scenes photographers. The wreck has never imagined it will host so many people on board. And you know what? I think it looks as impressive as I have could ever imagine it. By the way, divers from all over the world came to join this festive live broadcast dive today. While chatting with divers as they gear up for the dive, I bumped into one very funny Italian guy. Alberto, how are you? Ciao, Sharon, good. When I stay in a lot, for me, pleasure. Wow. And uh, uh, I like this uh, situation, yeah. because uh, for me, vacance and charge, <laughs> but uh, good, uh, uh, I, I like this competition, because unique in the world, no? Okay? Very unique, I agree. Yeah. 
And um, you're quite an experienced uh, diver and photographer. Where have you been diving in the world up until now? Yes, uh, I, I visit um, many islands in the world, and many, many pictures for 25 years. 25 years. And uh, I think in, in this area, not big, not a very big area, but uh, a good opportunity for all the photographs because the uh, the fish, the fish, and the live, and um, um, habituate uh, the uh, many many diver, many photograph, and a uh, good opportunity for good picture, good picture because very close the animal, very close the animal, and the special picture. Is your family watching? Yes, 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 yes. Good. Bye bye, Sharon. Thank you very much, Alberto, and enjoy your dive. Thank you. Thank bye, you. bye bye. So I've just counted, and we have 10 underwater photographers working down there at the moment. Some are delivering the visuals you're receiving at the moment, and some are covering the event in video and stills. Would be interesting to note that different underwater photo manufacturers are represented down there at the moment. We didn't arrange this ahead, but spontaneously, you have almost all the leading underwater photo manufacturers' brands there for photographic equipment. We did speak with Boat Samurai, one of the live photographers, just before he grabbed his camera and rushed into the water. Hey, Boaz. Hi. How are you? Excellent. Very excited. I understand you'll be holding one of the live uh, cameras today. How does it feel? Uh, it's a bit scary when there's a satellite on the other end of the camera, but I think we'll do okay. I'm sure you will. And uh, what challenges do you see in today's dive? Uh, today we did a check before, but of course in the sea you can never know which conditions you're going to face. As for visibility and the current, and adding to that over 200 divers underwater at the same time, at the same place, trying to get all of them in the same uh, uh, view of the camera, is, I think there's enough challenges involved. You know what they say in these situations, better you than me. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, um, who's your team underwater? We have a team of uh, myself and with three live photographers, me and my, my wife, Shai, who's holding one of the cameras, and Dima, who is another live photographer, will be trying to catch all of the action underwater. Do you have different roles? Does each photographer have a different role in uh, underwater? Yes, basically we're trying to cover everything that's happening underwater, so we set one of us a bit further in the back to get a wide point of view of the whole wreck with all of the divers, and me who's going to go between the divers trying to get all the details of the action happening. Sounds like a big day today. Yeah, it's a huge day for diving. So good luck, and we'll keep your, our fingers crossed that everything will turn out just as perfect as you imagined it. Bye bye. Our free diver Alon Rivkin with a diver version of a racing flag, basically indicating that our dive has come to its end, has passed a few moments ago. Shortly you'll see our divers starting to ascend to the surface within an organized fashion. You might notice that Alon seems especially calm during his free dive. That's because he holds the Israeli free diving record of 120 meters. What's a 20 meter visit for him at the wreck? This is perhaps the best opportunity to thank some of the international partners and sponsors who have been supporting our productions ever since the first Elat Red Sea event took place here in 2005. SeaCam, the Papua New Guinea Tourism Authority, Walindi, Fabrina, Loloata, Lisenung, the Cyprus Tourism Organization, Elat's Underwater Observatory Marine Park, the Israeli Ministry of Culture and Sports, the Israeli Ministry of Tourism, the Elat Municipality, the Ministry for Development of the Negev and the Galili, the Israeli Diving Authority, Elat Diving Centers led by Nir Avni, and high-tech companies Valence, Sony, and Satling. This January, we'll be exhibiting at the Boot Düsseldorf Show. A huge exhibition of all Elat Red Sea 2014 images will be featured there in cooperation with PADI, the largest diving agency in the world. Tomorrow, Saturday, September 13th, at 8.30 p.m., GFT Plus 3, we'll be live broadcasting the award-winning ceremony of the Elat Red Sea 2014 competition. Visit our website, www.elatredsea.com, for this exciting ceremony and some of the most breathtaking underwater images you've ever seen. I would like to thank each and one of you joining our live broadcast this morning. 
It was a pleasure to dive with you here at the Satilarek in Elat. For all you divers out there, keep diving safely and please take care of the underwater world. It's so fragile and it needs your protection by all means. This is Sharon Rain as Shoval, live broadcasting from Elat, Israel for Storm in the Sea. Thank you and see you again tomorrow.